the traffic is going to wreck this clip, isn't it? And I was doing so good this week with the lack of traffic, and now everybody's just got to wreck it. G'day folks, Jordan here today with another software overview video. In today's video, we're exploring Ubuntu 5.10 Breezy Badger released on the 12th of October 2005. Now, this actually brought forth some really nice improvements to the Ubuntu user experience, such as finally adding a graphical bootloader or what would be called a splash screen when you start the operating system, similar to what you might see on Windows or Mac OS nowadays. Of course, you know, that was obviously the case back then, but Ubuntu didn't have one until this release. It used a app called Usplash, I believe, to perform the splash screen functionality, which you will soon see. There was also a new add remove apps tool, which was previously absent in Ubuntu. I thought that was really interesting to find out, but that was actually the case with Windows as well, where there was no way to uninstall apps unless the apps came with an uninstaller, unless you also bought your own uninstaller application or downloaded your own from the internet at the time. So that was definitely something that I didn't even know Ubuntu really had absent in the older versions. That was really interesting to find out. There's also a menu editor, I believe that was called a la carte, which lets you edit the menus in GNOME or Genome. There's also full HP printer support through a special Linux driver, as well as OEM installer support which was interesting because I suppose if an OEM was interested in it, such as Dell, for example, they could preload Ubuntu onto a particular computer or other OEMs who wanted to preload Linux on their computers. Interestingly, in the GNOME user interface, it used to have the GNOME logo, but now it features the Ubuntu logo, which you'll soon see eventually when we get into the operating system. And finally, there was also logical volume management support added into the disk partitioning tools. So very similar to like Mac OS Extended or APFS or something like that, you could like edit your partitions and resize them whenever you wanted to, hence logical volume management. So I believe that's what LVM stands for, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it allows for easier partition editing and so on and so forth. So with that out of the way, that's about all the major changes that have been introduced in Ubuntu 5.10 compared to the predecessors. So let's get to installing it now. All right, so as you can see, it looks a lot darker than the last one. And as you can see, the text is the same, but the logo has been changed to, well, reflect the splash screen. So you just press enter and it does its thing. Now, the installer is essentially the exact same thing. There's just minor differences between the last one that we looked at and this one. For example, at the bottom of the screen, which I'll get my Mac cursor out here, you can see it just tells you the keyboard commands because there is no mouse support in this setup, so it just shows you what keyboard commands are available at what particular menu. But otherwise, the setup is practically the exact same. Oh, the traffic is going to wreck this clip, isn't it? And I was doing so good this week with the lack of traffic, and now everybody's just got to wreck it. So as you can see, here is the section of where you can configure logical volume management. There's a separate little option here in the partitioner. Of course, you can edit it yourself manually, but there's just no point. I'm just going to do a tab, go back, and partition disks. And I suppose we'll just do this. So now it should install just fine. I don't know why I installed, I don't know why I did the partitioning myself. That just makes no sense. But this is just for a video. So you just do everything for the video. So yeah, like I said afterwards, this looks exactly the same until the next restart. So I'm just going to skip to then. I almost forgot actually, towards the end of the setup, the little stars for your password have actually returned. So. I almost forgot about that detail, but yes, those did make a comeback. All right, it's time to restart, so let's go ahead and... Huh, interesting. I did not see that stuff in my testing, so I guess that's just a quirk of the virtual machine here on the Mac. 
And any second now, we should see the new splash screen. It looks horrible because it's in a low color depth designed for compatibility. But as you can see, it's a splash screen. Now, what's cool is it not only has the graphical Ubuntu logo on the splash screen, but it also gives you all the important information down below so you can still see it when the computer starts up. I don't know why other Linux distributions hide this away behind a pretty splash screen anymore because this is actually legitimately useful information. But that's just a choice on the developer's part, not me, of course. So, I mean, it is what it is. I'm just the end user. So, what's also cool is there's this new graphical setup screen. Well, graphical as in graphical in quote marks, still text mode, where it actually configures all the packages inside of a more elegant solution I suppose instead of having all of the uh, package or package yeah packages it says so right there in front of me in front of you and an ever or an, in an ever ending list it just put it inside of this little menu here so it looks a lot prettier so that's pretty nice so I'm gonna be back once this is done all right and here we are at the login screen for Ubuntu 5.10 I must apologize there's birds chirping in the background so if you hear birds my apologies I thought my background noise was going to be quiet today, but I guess not. I'm just not so fortunate on a Sunday when it's actually a halfway decent day to record. So, whatever, I guess. Anyway, um, I had a silly little thing happen to me when I was trying to get this set up, and it went black. And I could not figure out what was going on, so I just, yeah. Alright, are we going to get ear raped this time? Let's find out. Hopefully not. I didn't get any ear raped when I was testing on PC, so let's see if I get it this time. No, my luck is probably going to end up happening. It's going to scare the crap out of me. Or we just have a black screen. That's nice, too. That's always nice to have a black screen. I like black screens. Those are nice. And... Yeah, I don't think uh, we're getting anywhere. We have a nice black screen, and there is no disk activity going on. Uh, that's convenient. Um, we're just gonna restart, I think. I think that sounds pretty good. But anyway, we're here now. We're gonna go ahead and log in. The login screen looks identical to that of Ubuntu 5.04, so there's no real change there. And of course, the login screen is going to have the same login sound, but the look is a little bit different, so pay attention. It's got a nice glow to it. it looks pretty nice. So, here we are at the GNOME desktop, and as you can see, the background looks pretty nice. As you can see, I reflected my thumbnail of this video actually to have this wallpaper I just wish that the Ubuntu logo was a little bit bigger but I guess you can't have everything in life so one of the first things you'll notice right out the gate the Ubuntu logo in the upper left so that's definitely there you can definitely see that the first thing also that you see inside of this menu is this add applications which we need to pop in our password for so here we are this is essentially the barest of beginnings of a software center, I guess. Because I know later in Ubuntu's development cycle, I know especially of the 2010s, they had a software center to where you could download some programs from their own repository or from something that's been tested with Ubuntu. Although I'm not sure. I don't think this is it. I think... Everything that comes with the operating system, for the most part, is there. You just deselect what you don't need. And there's a teaser. It has OpenOffice.org version 2. Which, that'll be another thing we take a look at, because I always look at OpenOffice in these little overview videos. As you can see, it's got a nice new splash screen. A lot less clutter. And, as you can see, this is version 1.9 for some reason. But, version 2, it's good enough gets the job done although version numbers really don't matter all too terribly much Firefox also got a slightly new version I believe it's 1.5 in this no it's 1.0.7 I was thinking ahead of version 6.06 .06, which we'll be taking a look at later which has 1.5 in it 
But as you can see, there is a new splash screen that describes Linux for human beings once again. Essentially, they modified the same exact text. They went into more depth about the whole project and the components of the operating system, the license agreement, of course, and so on and so forth. It talks about how each standard release of Ubuntu gets 18 months of security updates. So that's pretty cool. Evolution got a new icon. It is essentially the same thing. Again, I'm not going to bother setting this up, but the email client got a new icon. And in addition, some of the sound and video icons, I think the volume control got a different one, the sound juicer, CD ripper, and serpentine audio CD creator. I know that for a fact is new. As far as I know, it's new. Um, but otherwise, everything else is essentially the same. Um, GIMP is still here, version 2.2. That hasn't changed, although maybe that's a slightly different version if we were to go into the about panel, but I could honestly care less. And I believe at this stage, there's not really anything too terribly different. I know in 6.06, .06, they changed where the system tools are. They change them from applications and they put them over some of them in preferences and some of them in administration. But we'll take a look at that in 6.06 .06 when we get to that point. Otherwise, I believe that's about it because um, other than what you see here, which you pretty much see in any Ubuntu derivative is this package manager. I believe those are all the major noteworthy changes and improvements other than the LVM like I was mentioning earlier. I believe, what was it that I was going to take a look at? I'll need to look back at my notes. Give me which one second. Oh yes, I almost forgot. It was the menu editor tool. Now in 5.10, it's in a really strange place in the preferences panel. It's just called menus and toolbars, but it's very basic at this stage. I believe there's some other options you can add in here at some point when you want. I know in 6.06, .06 they expand on this and I'll be sure to show that off when 6.06 .06 comes along, but at this stage it's a very basic menu editing tool. Um, very basic, but I believe that was it. There's not really too much else that I can see in this that looks any different, because this also looks about the same. The human circle of friends looks the same. All these other things looks the same. Um, X server settings, interesting. Placing values in the section that your X server does not support will stop your X server from restarting, effectively not allowing this configuration application to be run. Be careful! That's pretty much anything with Linux. If you set anything the wrong way in Linux, guess what? Reinstall the whole operating system. Ha 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 ha. So, yeah. Anyways, that's about it for this as far as I can see. So let's go ahead and uh, log out technically, but this is to shut down the computer. I still don't know why they put it as log out at this stage. I know that in 6.06 .06 they fixed this. I'll be sure to point that out. But until then, that's it for this one. So appreciate you all taking the time to watch, and I'll see you all later. And yes, at this stage, there is no graphical shutdown screen, which is kind of a bummer, but they did fix this in 6.06 .06, where you actually had a graphical shutdown screen. It basically just used the same exact screen when you uh, turned on the computer. It uses that very same thing to shut down the machine. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Did not definitely take a quote from Techmoan, but whatever. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.